So today I want to make a video comparing Strava, Peak, Strava Premium and Training Peaks Premium and what I think is better on each of them. And with Strava, I will include the plugin which all of you have asked for, which is Source for Strava. Um, and we'll go through that in a little bit. But first of all, my main my main thing I want to focus on to begin with is the training model. So we'll, we'll just go split screen here so it's, it's a bit easier to compare them one by one. So obviously, if we go to Training Peaks on the right here first, you can see it gives you color coding of like your workout. So if you complete them successfully, so two and a half hours to do today um, with the right TSS, then it, it gives you a green tick. OK, it's not great, but it's quite nice to have all greens. Um, and then if we look, look about the future, this is another big thing with Training Peaks. You can plan things in the future. So I know like next Tuesday I've got 40 20s to do and I plan that out. Well, if we look on Strava on the left, you can only see the coming week. I think that's a, a huge error um, about Strava. And I'm not a massive fan of that. It also doesn't give you very many like useful metrics. It gives you kilometers, but like that's not a very useful metric. It can give you hours, which is obviously more useful, but it doesn't give you training stress and you can't easily compare it per week. While here it gives you the kilojoules, the, it gives you everything you ever need to see. It also gives you a summary. So when you're plotting out your weeks of um, of training, you can see you know what fitness you'll be, what fatigue you'll be on. But we'll get into this, you know, fitness predictions in the future. Um, in terms of finding like, you know, things you've done in previous years, it's a lot easier on Trading Peaks. You just click this button here, um, and out comes the diary, and you can select whatever you date you want. While on Strava, you've got like this weird the one on the right which goes through calendars, but then you've also got this thing on the left within each year. It doesn't really make sense. You can't easily find them, uh, and I'm not really a massive fan. Um, but I would I would say the the biggest thing that Trainee Peaks has over Strava um, is the ability to search workouts. So let's say you know this three times twenty minute effort I did it on the fourth of December. I also then did it on the twelfth of December. But I know I think I did it in March last year um, or this year. Sorry. So I've, I, you type in your three times twenty, and we can see when we're going to do it in the futures. But we did it here five hours on the weekend, um, and then I can see oh, I've done it on the twenty fourth of March, done it on the seventeenth, and I done it on the tenth. So then if I want to see, let's say, the 17th, you then click on this and it allows you to see, you know, the whole the whole training peaks, um, like everything. When you click analyze um, and all the rest of it, you'll be able to see exactly what happened. I think this is really useful because it allows you to show progress. Maybe you can see oh, my heart rate was quite high, my heart rate was quite low. Um, so here I can see I was doing 260, I think 270 um, and then 280. So I can see, OK, if I could do that in March and now. You know, I did 280 to 90, 300, then obviously I've, I've made some good gains. And um, especially with heart rate, it's quite useful. Um, but I think as we're going to, as we've already been into the Training Peaks one, I think I'm now going to compare um, the analysis of Strava versus Training Peaks. I think this is really where um, Strava wins, in my opinion. And you, you might think that's weird, but I think with Strava Source, I don't really analyze a lot of my training in Training Peaks. Um, I do for some stuff, but a lot of it, I just find the user interface is a lot easier. Um, so this is where Strava Source really comes into its own. Um, so this is obviously just the default um, training that you get sent from Strava. Unfortunately, my internet seems to be very slow, so it's taking its time to load. Um, but you can see all this. I, I quite like, you know, obviously pictures and all the rest of it. Um, but in terms of the tabs on the side, it feels a lot better than the Training Peaks because that's more of like a just comes out the menu, gets see the map, obviously. Um, segments, I actually think are also quite useful to compare. Like if you want to see... You know, I know all the climbs. Like, oh, I, I want to see how, how fast I was at the temple because um, that's why I did one of my efforts. And you just scroll down um, and we can see the tumble here or whatever. I did 280 watts, which obviously I knew I did. But I think that is quite useful. But obviously, when we go into the analysis here, um, we've now got normalized power um, for any duration on Strava source. X power is like similar, but not similar. I don't actually know what the formula is for it, but it tends to give slightly lower numbers of anything. Um, and then it's also got kilojoules, which is really useful, um, especially races and obviously altitude and all the rest of it. And I think this setup here is really, really nice to see. It's very easy to see. Um, and like you can just compare it so much better than what the Training Peaks offering has. Um, and obviously we'll, we'll get into the Training Peaks one now and you'll be able to see. So we're going to do the same ride here. So you click this. First of all, you know, it has the potential for comments before, which is which is better. It gives, you know, you can give your preserved ex exertion. I've given my comment there as well. And, it, you know, it tells you the, this rough thing here, but it's not full screen, which I don't really get. Um, I think if I click this, it does go bigger. 
Um, but this is more into the analysis part, um, which you'll see when it loads. So I don't think it's great here. Um, so this has just got the power, but let's say we want to see everything. Then we can go show all, uh, which I then think is just like, what, why, nah, that's not what I want. So this is on the time thing, but it includes pauses in the ride. That's really stupid. But I think if I have the distance, it generally works better. But I still think it's just too chaotic to see. Um, and I'm not a massive fan. Um, you can also show the zones on here so we can show zones. Um, but that just makes it even more confusing. Like, like what what is going on here? Um, anyway, we'll we'll go hide others on the on the power and we'll go hide zones as well. Um, so if you're just looking, you can see, oh, like, you know, those are my numbers. But I just don't think it really is as great. Now, obviously, there are some metrics here which Strava doesn't have and Strava Source doesn't have. So variability index, it's not, you, know, you can work that out yourself. It's just the difference between normalized and uh, average power. Um, your EF is sort of your efficiency factor. It's done on heart rate versus power. It's another one of those metrics. I can't remember exactly what, what it is. Power to heart rate, I've gone through that before. It compares power and heart rate um, for the first half and the second half of the ride. But if you ever stop, it's not the most accurate um, I find. And then this is more information. But like, why does Training Peaks have minute per kilometer that doesn't really add up? Um, so I think in general, I'm not a huge fan of this. I never really use it. I use it for aerobic rides to see, you know, potentially like what, like what the heart rate's looking at because it has some metrics like that. But the zones, okay, they're all right. But the power curve like is just useless. Like, what is this? Why does it not go every second? Like if we just compare to Strava here and go power curve here, and it's just so much better. You can see where it happened on the ride straight away. We can see on every single second, which is just so much better. We can compare the years so much more easily. You can see the watts per kilo. Um, I think in that sense, it, it's not even close, uh, the comparison. And then also, if you have Strava source, it also tells you there as well. Um, and it's got the lap function. Okay, there's... It's about the same, in my opinion, um, both the lap functions. Um, but yeah, I, so I think in, in overall, Strava definitely dominates on that. We're then going to go on fitness and freshness, because I think this is potentially where training peaks. That's where, you know, if you're serious, um, we're about to get another absolute chaotic graph coming up. But this is where I think if you're seriously like on it about training. Uh, but before we go into this, like it's just a nightmare to try and reorganize these. I can never see what I want to see. But this is definitely something that's quite useful um, and that I use relatively often. Um, so you might be like, what is going on here? So along the bottom is the dates. Along the left is the TSS per day. Um, I think this could be heart rate, though. I don't know. No, it shouldn't be. Um, this is the last 365 days. So in blue is your fitness. So that's like the one at the bottom. And then your form is the yellow and your fatigue is the pink. So I find this is quite useful. OK, confusing at the beginning, I will admit, but you can sort of see the trends of the year um, and you can also see, you know, when you were peaking, when you were doing well. So I can see this is hill climb season here. And if I want to say, oh, that's actually really good on like Friday, then you can, you know, click on this, um, click on the workout, let's say uh, this is 94K. And then, you know, I can see exactly what I was doing on that day, which I think is a real, real advantage compared to the Strava one. Uh, mainly because the algorithm. This also has some other interesting stats like longest workout. Okay, that's a bit pointless, but peak power. Then it's got your general power over the last couple couple months and also the kilojoules, which again, I think is quite useful. Um, it's got like power zones, which again, I don't know how useful are. Your time in power zones, big old zone two for me, uh, which we love to see. And then it's got my peak powers ever, which is also quite useful, but not crazy useful. If we now go over to Strava, I like i don't even know what's going on here but if we do just power but you can see like wait what like it just goes crazy like there's there's arbitrary units which no one knows how they ever calculate it like at least training peaks you know they tell you exactly how they calculate it but we look at all time uh you'll just see it. it's like absolutely ridiculous the sort of crazy peaks and numbers and I, I just don't really understand it it doesn't really give you much insight and it just generally makes it up and like relative effort as well like i just don't understand it and on the app it has all the like oh look at you that you're doing too much work and it based on heart rate and like it's just it just don't look at this it's 
like no point looking at it. It does absolutely nothing. I remember I used to get like back in the day when I didn't really know as much as I do now. I still don't know very much, but um, like uh, training, I was just like obsessed with getting the number as high as possible, but it's literally completely useless. I would also say that with the training piece one, I don't think the number is as important as people think it is. I think the sensations are a lot more important and how you feel. Um, like I know you'll get to know your body a lot better. Um, and I think that is more importantly. Then I think the social aspect, obviously, Strava wins. It's not even a competition. Group creation as well. You can't do it. Um, so, yeah, those are my summaries with Training Peaks versus Strava. In general, I think if you're happy analyzing on Training Peaks, I'd sack off Strava Premium unless you really cared about leaderboards. Um, but for me, I really don't see any advantage of analyzing on Training Peaks for most of the time. Okay, sometimes it's really useful. But, like, I've got almost everything I need on Strava now. And like maybe I just don't analyze rides enough, which could be true. Uh, but I think the main advantage and the main reason I pay for Training Peaks is just so I can plan all my training out. I can see all my TSS. I can see like all the past, and it's just so much easier than like writing it down a spreadsheet. It gives you the instant feedback as well. Um, and those I think are the main reasons why I would recommend Training Peaks. Um, if you're serious about like training, I think it's definitely a good way to do it but it's not the only way you can do it on excel it doesn't really matter i mean as long as you get it done it's just sometimes easier if you just see it and um in front of you and you can see you know the, the path the thing i like doing is just plotting it all out you're like oh i'm gonna go from this week to that week and the way it's set up you can see like it, like if we just go through this bit a little bit you can see that the progression that i do you know it's like slowly add up the hours 15 16 and then 19 this week so that you know, it gives you quite a lot of progression. You can see week week to week as well. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts about them. Let me know if you pay for Strava, pay for Training Peaks, um, or anything else. Some people use My Fitness Plan or whatever they're called. Um, but yeah, these are the two I use, uh, and I'm quite happy with them. I think if Strava hadn't had that update where you couldn't see leaderboards, there's a strong possibility I would have unsubscribed because I don't think it gives me that much more to be honest. But now you have to if you can't you can't see segments without paying. It's quite a big incentive to pay, but Training Peaks definitely is is the one. So anyway, cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one.